Okay, um, good morning to everyone, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we, are on, uh, we are in streaming. I hope you can uh, hear me loud and clear. Uh, my name is Piero Venturi. I'm uh, the science counselor uh, uh, for uh, the uh, African Union uh, and uh, I'm located to the EU delegation uh, to the African Union here in Addis Ababa. I will moderate uh, uh, this, uh, this event, this webinar on the, the Green Deal Call Africa. Topic is accelerating the green transition and energy assess partnership with Africa. This is a, a topic that has been discussed and agreed uh, with uh, in the frame of the working group on climate change, sustainable energy of the high level policy dialogue on science and technology coordinated between the African Union and the European Union. On this purpose, I would like to remark once more the strong cooperation that uh, the um, European, European Commission has uh, with uh, the African Union Commission, uh, specifically the uh, Directorate on Human Resource Science and Technology. And uh, on this purpose, I want to thank uh, uh, Mashaleni Ambani, my colleague Mashaleni, for uh, this cooperation. The program of today will be opened by uh, the words uh, of uh, my ambassador, Birgit Markusen, the uh, ambassador uh, to uh, the EU delegation to the African Union. And uh, then it will be followed by um, the welcoming remarks of uh, the, the African Union commissioner on uh, uh, human resources, science and technology, Professor Sara Akbor. After this, we will enter in more technical aspects with, uh, uh, with my colleague, Philip Shield, that is uh, basically the brain behind uh, this topic that uh, will explain what are the objectives that uh, we expect to get uh, from uh, the proposals. After this, we will have a um, question and answer session uh, that uh, will be open to all the participants uh, uh, to give questions uh, to the speakers. On this purpose, uh, I would like to mention uh, some housekeeping uh, rules. First one is that uh, this event is fully taped. The second one, if you have some technical problem of connection, please use the chat uh, mentioning what kind of problem do you have so our IT crew can, uh, can solve it. If you want uh, to have uh, to make some question, there is a specifically uh, question and answer space where you can uh, raise your hand to make question to the speaker and following the order, we will give uh, you the word. That said, I will give the floor to Ambassador Markusen for uh, her remarks. Please, Ambassador. Thank you very much, Piero, and uh, a warm welcome to all participants, but of course, first and foremost, a very warm welcome to Commissioner and Professor Sarah Akbo, uh, who will also open this uh, session together with me. I want in particular to thank uh, the Commissioner for her support also previous this year in relation to the ministerial meeting that was held on the 16th of July. And I would also, of course, obviously encourage all AU member states, researchers and science managers who are participating in this webinar today. You're most welcome. And I want to encourage you to seek close ties with the European Union uh, within this important subject. So what I see today is a great uh, participation of scientists and innovators connected from all over Africa in this webinar. And that, of course, is a pleasure for us and it shows um, the interest and also the successful cooperation and the interest from African researchers and scientists in this joint program uh, run by the European Union. I would like to look at the, uh, this regional cooperation with Africa on research and innovation. As was mentioned just a minute ago by Piero, it's based on an AU-EU high-level policy dialogue on science, technology, and innovation. And this policy dialogue um, 
is it serves as a platform for formulating and implementing our joint European Union, African Union long-term research and innovation uh, priorities. We're looking at uh, four partnerships at the moment. I'll just uh, indicate them for you. One on public health. We have one on food and nutrition security and sustainable agriculture. Another one on climate change and sustainable energy. And then we have the fourth one on innovation to move the cooperation agenda forward. This actually includes a total investment from our side of almost 2 billion euro uh, that has gone into these various projects and partnerships. But beyond everything, what I want to, to really stress today is the science has to inspire the future and many important tools are in the pipeline to make this cooperation even more relevant over the next years. A good example uh, is the ongoing discussion to have a special cross-cutting initiative focusing on Africa in the next EU research and innovation program called Horizon Europe, with actually a total budget of uh, 85 billion euro. Another one, uh, another example that I would like to highlight is the Global Health Partnership, which some of you will know is the follow-up of the well-known European Development Clinical Trials Partnership, which contributes to improve public health and fight the COVID-19 pandemic in Africa. Obviously, a key uh, priority uh, at the moment. In all this, of course, the Team Europe approach is also used here. Our member states are very active. It's, it's the European Union and our mem member states that are working on these important research and innovation activities. Allow me also to highlight uh, the attention that the European Union gives to climate change, which is at the heart of our discussions today, is witnessed, of course, by the Green Deal call. The last impressive 1 billion euros call of Horizon 2020, which is a specific program running in 2020, this investment will accelerate a just and sustainable transition to a climate neutral Europe by 2050. Obviously, innovation is at the core of this initiative. As we do not want to leave anyone behind and we want to work, uh, climate change is a global issue. Um, and we want to work with everybody in this systemic uh, transformation we call for specific actions to engage with citizens in new ways and improve relevance and impact also at the level of societies and obviously also in our partner and neighboring regions. So today we will discuss the topic, accelerating the green transition and energy access partnership with Africa, which is included in the Green Deal call. The main objectives of the five projects will be fund, that will be funded with a total budget of 40 million euro. I'll just outline them. There are mainly two. The first one is objective is to build local capacities and promoting research, including applied research as a pillar in the development of sustainable energy in Africa. And secondly, contributes substantially to technology take up in the region. With these words, I really wish you a very successful webinar and a fruitful technical discussion. This is a key priority for the European Union and for our partnership with the African Union and all you researchers and active participants today. Back to you, Piero. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ambassador, for, uh, for these very clear uh, words. And uh, now I pass, uh, the, I give the floor to Commissioner Akbor. Please, uh, Professor Akbor, you are the floor. Um, Professor Akbor, we, we cannot hear you. 
Well, I see you, you are connected, but uh, we cannot uh, hear you and uh, see you. Technical colleagues, well, uh, you, are, you are muted. Maybe the, the IT colleagues, they have some suggestion. Yes, uh, you can unmute you and uh, start video in order to to talk with the participant. Kira, we are trying to solve the problem of the commissioner um, in the meanwhile. Okay, uh, so excuse me, the commissioner is about to join shortly. She's trying to connect. It was a technical difficulty. Okay, the commissioner is online. Okay, super, great. Please, commissioner, you have the floor. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I was multitasking. Hey, good to see you, my sister, Bridget. Good to see you. Good morning to everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, I welcome. Start, good morning, my sister, Excellency. Good morning, Mr. Piero Venturi. And good morning to all the extinct participants here. We thank God for the gift of life. Ah, it is a, a pleasure and honor for me to participate in the launch of the European Green Deal Hall that aims at accelerating the green transition energy process, energy access. I want to put down my phone. My phone is making noise. Okay, good. I'm sorry, I'm better like this. <laughs> Let me start all over again. <laughs> on be, um, it is a pleasure and honor for me to participate in the launch of the European Green Deal call that aims at accelerating the green transition, energy access, and digital transition within the framework of the partnership. Yeah. <laughs> within the framework of the partnership with Africa. Let me also welcome you all on behalf of the African Union Commission and convey to you warm greetings from His Excellency, Dr. Musa Faki Mohammed the chairperson of the African Union Commission. Your Excellency, Ms. Bridget Makusen, ambassador, head of the EU delegation to the African Union. We are delighted with the progress we are making since Lisbon 2007, when we adopted our overarching AU-EU joint strategy, which underlines the need for us to forge a new and stronger partnership for driving a long-term cooperation that enables us to build on our rich and vast existing ecosystem of both bilateral on, and multilateral relationships that are premised on our shared values, common interests, and policy imperatives. Indeed, this Green Deal call is one of the components for building this solid framework for a systematic and well-integrated cooperation between Africa and Europe. Our cooperation has offered us a unique opportunity to jointly address the common contemporary challenges for our continents and define new approaches to partnerships. For us, this is the very spirit of Pan-Africanism and the very spirit of Ubuntu, where we believe that my existence depends on your existence and vice versa. There are so many motivational reasons and factors for us to jointly work together to achieve the goals of this call. 
the eight thematic clusters of the Green Deal are pertinent to the development of our continents, and we must redouble our efforts to mobilize, to mobilize our scientific resources, competencies, and comparative advantages to ensure that we use science to respond to our development challenges, particularly in these unprecedented times with what COVID-19 is teaching us. Both our continents are committed to transitioning to low carbon energy systems and to build more reliable, resilient, and sustainable energy systems that can sustain our economies and boost the creativity of our growing young generations. Research and innovation have high potential to provide solutions for this transition. The benefits from an increased AU-EU partnership in this area cannot be overemphasized. As you may recall, we launched a number of structuring initiatives to effectively advance our cooperation. The high-level policy dialogue on science, technology, and innovation is one of these critical initiatives that provides both a political structure to enhance our dialogue through promoting better common understanding, building mutual trust and ownership of our partnership, and a technical platform for defining and setting priorities of mutual benefit for current and future collaboration and joint implementation. Subsequently, we adopted a long-term joint and co-owned AU-EU research and innovation partnerships. And one of them is on climate change and sustainable energy with a clear focus on renewable energy and energy sufficiency. This is within the AU Agenda 2063 and EU priorities and global agreements as well. In particular, the Paris Agreement and the Sustainable Development Goals that call for the transition to low carbon and climate resilient economies. Climate change, as we know it today, has affected most countries of the world, whether rich or poor, and therefore require concerted efforts. Actions that include sustainable response, growing resilience to the effects of climate change through adaptation and fast tracking action to cut greenhouse emissions from fossil fuels. Curtailing future climate damage depends on stopping the use of fossil fuels, especially coal, which is still very rampant in Africa. And the way to this is investments in Green Deal. Significantly, the Green Deal has a potential not just to minimize climate change damages, but also to grow our economy and create jobs, especially in the wake of COVID-19, where many jobs have been lost, economies and social life disrupted. The Green Deal investment is very complementary as Africa is endowed with the wind and solar for power generation. Europe, on the other hand, brings in the innovations that could be scaled up and foster green industrialization, entrepreneurship, and market opportunities for both continents. In domain of digital transition, Africa is unleashing its potential as a global economic growth pole and changing political landscapes through digital revolution. I must say here that although our demographic dividend translates into more demand for energy, it also offers a window of opportunity for advances in scientific discoveries and new technologies to solve African problems. Already happening is the dynamism of African techpreneurs as the continent leads innovation in the field of mobile phone finance systems. In conclusion, I would like to emphasize that strategic partnerships and collaboration at the bilateral and multilateral levels are essential for us to contribute. Commissioner, you muted, uh, you muted the, the mic. Now, I don't know where you got me. Was it in conclusion? 
Did yes. you hear me when I said in conclusion? Yes. Okay. In conclusion, I would like to emphasize that strategic partnerships and collaboration at the bilateral and multilateral levels are essential for us to contribute to solving global challenges. Let me use this opportunity to thank the EU for the great cooperation that is enabling us to realize our mutual and common goals. While I am optimistic that this program will equip both continents with knowledge systems and infrastructures, there will be demands from both the scientific and policy-making perspective, which calls for inclusive participation of all stakeholders in the spirit of Ubuntu to collectively deliver on this program. Thank you very much, Ms. Bridget Makusan, Your Excellency, and for joining us and to make sure that this works. And thank you, Mr. Piero Venturi and all esteemed participants. I thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Commissioner, for addressing uh, uh, very clearly the, the challenges that we have to face all together for uh, the, the future and, uh, well, for, uh, for uh, highlighting our strong cooperation. Thank you. At this point, I would give the floor to Philip Shield. That uh, uh, well, I thank first of all. I thank uh, uh, both my commission and my my ambassador, Markusen, and uh, the commissioner Akbar for uh, their opening remarks. And I give the floor to uh, Philip Shield. Thank Please. you, uh, Piero, uh, for. Uh, and I thank sort of the organizer for having, having inviting me to uh, to present sort of uh, the topic. I thank also the ambassador and the commissioner to have presented the uh, frame into which this topic was sort of uh, created. So uh, without further ado, I will uh, share my screen. and have and start the presentation. So, um, uh, Thank you. Uh, for some reason, sort of, uh, uh, my camera has switched off. Um, so I will present you sort of the uh, topic that we have opened in our uh, Green Team call, as presented by the commissioner. So uh, I am uh, Philip Schild. I'm working in the uh, Director General on Research and Innovation in the unit on clean energy transition. Um, and uh, as Piero uh, very kindly introduced me at the beginning, uh, I have been working sort of with the uh, challenge uh, and the opportunities of uh, developing uh, the partnership with, uh, uh, with Africa. So as it was presented, uh, this topic is done into the, within the frame of the AU-EU high-level policy dialogue on science, technology, and innovation. Uh, and in particular, uh, on within the partnership of climate change, sustainable energy, and uh, it, that was established in 2017. Uh, I will not uh, spend too much time on this slide as it was very well presented uh, by the, by the <coughs> commissioner and the ambassador, uh, just stating that this partnership uh, focus on two main issues, on climate adapt action for adaptation and mitigation and on sustainable energy. And within the sustainable energy, it is focusing only on renewable energy and energy efficiency. And this is why uh, the topic itself uh, focus on those two issues on the development of renewable energy source, including solution for offshore, off 
grid, sorry, uh, communities and the integration into existing energy system, considering the generation of renewable energy, its transmission, and the possible use of storage or battery system according to the situation, or energy efficiency. So applicants for this topic just need to choose what they want to, uh, to demonstrate. Uh, within the scope of this topic. So when you have made a choice, uh, we ask you to demonstrate innovative sustainable energy solution, considering climate adaptation, mitigations, the potential compared to other technologies and solution within the African social, economic and environmental context. So the solution should also consider uh, the context of both urbanized and rural uh, situation in Africa. It doesn't mean that the application has to focus on both of them, meaning have a demonstration on both. You choose which one you want to apply, uh, but within the development of your concept, you have to see if uh, how it can be adapted to the other context. Uh, also, looking at the water energy food nexus, uh, this is important because energy is using, uh, in many cases, water as part of its process. So we have to see that sort of we have a balance of usage. Uh, and we want to aim to provide the sustainable energy access for electricity, cooking, and our creation of improving health, economic wealth, and jobs. Also, uh, within the, uh, the project, so the project, we expect them uh, to design, construct, commission, and operate a demonstration installation. At the same time, to develop and implement a tailored value chain approach, meaning identifying the most sustainable manufacturing value chain on the basis of uh, the local context, the local material supply chain, and the local workforce with the objective of ensuring sustainable local economic development. It means that uh, you are not only uh, focusing on building and operating a demonstration, but you are also, uh, we are also ask you to look in the future to see what you need to have a supply chain to be able to deploy uh, your solution. At the same time, we are also looking at you that you identify the technical, the vocational, and the educational need of the workforce, and you propose relevant training and qualification activities so that you have uh, the workforce to be able to uh, construct, commission, or and operate your installation. We are also asking you to define a market and business strategy to ensure the impact through a quick and viable commercial take-up of the technology solution demonstrated. Because we want your projects or your future projects, if you are successful, to have a real impact. At the same time, uh, we are asking you to, sorry, uh, we are asking you to include uh, a life cycle analysis uh, to be done within the project to show that the impact of your solution compared to the other existing technology and solution on the environmental, on the climate change target and on the social and economic, uh, economic dimension, taking a cradle to grave viewpoint are positive. Uh, what we are also asking you to consider within the proposal is that sort of have a circular economy approach, which is which are aligned uh, with the Green Deal priority. A circular economy, it means that you're looking also at what has happened when you uh, decommission your installation in terms of recycling or reuse. Uh, the demonstration installation uh, is to be installed and located in Africa. Uh, so we expect in the consortium that the relevant African partners are present to participate in the implementation of the project. And we ask the consortium to have a balance between European and African uh, partners. And this will be uh, assessed by the evaluators of the project, of the application. We also remind you that sort of Copernicus data and product uh, 
can be used to support your activities in the life cycle analysis to evaluate the impact on human and environment, and also possible also to for the operation uh, of your uh, plants and installation. Uh, we uh, also state there that all the future projects uh, will participate and contribute to our AU-EU partnership on climate change and sustainable energy, in particular through cooperation and collaboration to a project that will start in January that has been selected this year. Uh, and it's focusing on the implementation of a joint program of, act of research activities uh, and there we ask the consortium to plan a work package uh, for this collaboration with resources and time allocated. And it is sort of a mild, sort of, uh, it's not hard work that we're asking you there, is collaboration, exchange of uh, lesson learned, feedback, participation of different sort of workshops. Uh, this topic uh, also specified expected impact, and we put it in the three categories, short-term impact, medium and long-term. In the short-term, we expect that out of the project, you will have demonstrated the technologically reliability and economically viability of your solution, that you have proven within your project the environmental, health, climate, social, and economic impact of the renewable energy solution by putting in place measure and mechanism in line with the highest European environmental and social standards, uh, and taking into uh, consideration uh, that at the EU level uh, of upcoming taxonomy principle and mechanism. Also to have climate adaptation and climate mitigation potential solution compare and positive compared to all the existing solution. And obviously to have strengthen our uh, John AU EU uh, climate change and sustainable energy partnership efforts with the emphasis of improving the visibility of EU science diplomacy action in Africa. On the medium term impact, uh, we expect that your uh, future project will create new market opportunities for both European and African companies on the African uh, continent, jointly together, uh, to have improved the technological updates on the African continent on renewable uh, energy solution and energy efficiency solution, and to accelerate the achievements uh, of the African continent targets of the Paris Agreement in line with the Europe Green Deal ambition of climate neutrality and external dimension. And on the long term, uh, we do expect that your project will contribute to the economic growth and job creation, both in the EU and in the African country. Uh, these topics contribute also to uh, long-term uh, benefits or would contribute to long-term benefits of the sustainable development goal. And here is all the list where energy could have a positive impact, including uh, sustainable goal seven, which is on sustainable energy. Now, the above of topic, uh, uh, the proposal size, uh, we are estimating that uh, proposal between five or 10 million EC uh, contribution sh will allow the specific challenge to be addressed appropriately, depending of the concept and the location. Uh, it doesn't prevent you to ask for less or for more. Uh, obviously, you will need to justify it anyway, uh, the use of resources in the application. The estimated budget uh, for uh, the topic is 40 million. Uh, the type of action is an innovation action. Uh, in our language, it means it's a demonstration uh, action. So it's high TRL, TRL up to uh, seven, which is a demonstration of the concept in real life environment. It means also that the uh, uh, funding rates is 70% of the total eligible cost, except for non-profit legal organization where a rate of 100% applies. 
we have inserted a specific eligibility and admissibility condition where we are requiring that at least two partners from one, uh, at least one African country must be part of the consortium uh, because it's the installation has to be in one African countries. Now, what I will go uh, uh, briefly is uh, through uh, a bit of uh, information on the submission of the proposal. Uh, our evaluation process is, uh, you can say, is organized on five steps. Uh, uh, in fact, the step zero is when you write your proposal. But step one is a submission of the proposal up to the deadline. And the deadline of this call is on the 21st January 2021 at 5 p.m. Brussels time. Uh, when, so on the 22nd of January, uh, the call is closed. We'll see all the proposal. We'll first check admissibility and eligibility. For all the admissible and eligible proposal, uh, we will present them to external experts for evaluation according to three criteria, which is on excellence, on implementation, and on impact. From the outcome of this evaluation, there will be a ranking list uh, made by the experts according to the scores. And then a decision on funding will be made according to the available funding. And finally, we will start from this funding decision, the grant preparation with a successful proposal, which are the highest score and within the funding range. And then the final step will be uh, the signing of a grant agreement and the start of the project. Basically, when you write your proposal, you should remember to be realistic, to understand the call. And that means uh, reading uh, the call topic. I presented you uh, a brief outline of what is in the call topics, but you should read the call topics and all the relevant other documents. Uh, have a clear mind in your uh, explanation on the TRLs of where you are and where you want to go. Uh, remember that the impact of your project will be uh, scrutinized by the evaluation. So you have to think of what would be your impact. Obviously, you need to have planned a sound budget and well explained. And uh, when we write a simple text, it means that uh, it's, the text should not be too confused. So you have to be clear in your writing. Uh, so that the evaluator can uh, get immediately what you mean. So the minimum, I'm just explaining here in these slides, uh, the minimum requirements for uh, the uh, uh, consortium is to have three independent partners from EU uh, member state or associated state to Horizon 2020. As I just said before, on top of these three independent partners, we are asking two partners from at least one African partner. So this is something to remember when you put your consortium together. Uh, what now I'm going to present is how you can find this topic on our website. And later I will uh, try to share uh, my web browser so you will see what kind of information you can find with uh, with the topic itself. So here you see the top uh, link uh, to get to our funding opportunities. And you see on the right where you can see uh, Horizon 2020 framework programs where you will find a topic. When you click on this link, on this uh, uh, point, you will find an opportunity for searching proposal. You just type Africa. And there you will have the list of all the open and closed topic uh, where the keyword Africa was put, which means that there is a lot of other topics that can, uh, where an African partners could, could participate also or with an African uh, focus. So you see the, uh, uh, the topic. 
And now I will uh, uh, try to share my browser. So sorry, bear with me. Oops. I will. Uh, no, sorry. Okay, so yeah, so now you should see my uh, my browser. So uh, when you click on the topic as highlighted in my uh, slides, you will uh, reach sort of uh, the topic itself, uh, where uh, it will give you uh, you know you will see the uh, the topic description. Uh, where you can, when you click on show more, you see all the text, you will access sort of, of any footnotes that we will have. Uh, uh, you will see also uh, the topic condition. Uh, this is stuff uh, could be, uh, there you see sort of uh, the, uh, the eligible uh, countries, for example, you know, if you click on this, you will have a, another, uh, uh, information where you see all the list of eligible country for for funding uh, for your interest uh, uh, most of all the countries are eligible in Africa are eligible uh, for funding uh, you may not see for example in the list Tunisia because Tunisia is associated to the program uh, to horizon 2020 which means that it can receive funding so, uh, so you are all eligible for funding. Uh, what you see also uh, as a, uh, so you see all the documents that you click, you will, you will be able to see the evaluation criteria and threshold as it is described in our work program, the uh, submission and evaluation process also described in our online manual. Uh, you will, you can see a description of what we mean by innovation, the specific provision and funding rates. You can download here the standard proposal template. You can even have the uh, standard evaluation forms where you can uh, have uh, somebody outside your consortium or within one of your partner to try to evaluate the proposal to see if you have uh, not forgotten something. Uh, and all the uh, information. What if you go down, scroll down? Also, uh, you have the opportunity of having uh, a tool which helps you to search partners. And here you can see that at the moment there is 85 organizations that are looking for partners for this topic. Here you will you see uh, the link uh, where you can uh, register and start. Uh, the process to, for the submission. You can submit a proposal at any time up to the deadline. And you can, and when you have submitted, you can resubmit it again if you want uh, to do a change in your proposal. And that is up to the deadline. Uh, there is also a link to the topic related facts. So where we have uh, a fact made, you will see also here, uh, the link of all uh, the frequently asked questions that we have all already uh, answered. At the moment, only one is present, uh, but in the coming sort of weeks and months, we will add more uh, frequently asked questions. And uh, I will uh, finish here my, uh, uh, my presentation. So, and I'm uh, open for any uh, uh, question that you may have. Uh, okay, many, many thanks, uh, Philip, uh, for uh, your very exhaustive uh, presentation. Well, uh, 
now we open the floor for questions. Uh, well, I, I take the first one from, um, uh, well, from uh, Dr. Uh, Tendoni. That uh, is, uh, it was not in the question and answer chart, it was in the other one. And he would like to know if uh, your presentation will be available for the attendees. Uh, yes, I will uh, send you uh, 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 a copy of my presentation that you can distribute to all the attendees. Super, super, many thanks. And uh, so now I will, I would open the floor uh, for, uh, uh, for, okay, here we are. Um, I would open the floor for question with uh, uh, Madame uh, Julia. Well, I'm, I apologize, but the surname is so long that it uh, doesn't fit in uh, the screen. So it's uh, Madame Julia and then uh, um, Raniero Kelly and uh, uh, Madame Cristina Soriani. Okay, we take the first uh, three questions and then we follow up uh, with uh, the others. So. Uh, well, I, I, I push, uh, okay, uh, I think, I think uh, you should uh, have access to, to the, the audio now. Well, for, for the moment, we cannot uh, hear and see anything. Well, I, I, I see the question on, uh, on the Q&A, so I may be able to, uh, uh, to answer directly. If, okay, uh, okay, well, let's, let's go ahead like this, yeah. Uh, the question is, should the solution uh, provider be primarily from the EU or should there be a okay, combination see, of local? I see Julia, Julia is, uh, is online. You okay. should unmute yourself. Okay. Uh, hello. Yes. Uh, thank you very much for, for this opportunity. And thank you, Philip, for your presentation. So um, I had two questions, I think, that if I start with the first one, which was related more to the composition of the consortium on the industry side, and if my understanding is correct, uh, uh, or, or actually my question is uh, whether or not uh, the solution providers uh, should primarily come from the European countries, or should there be a combination, or should, for example, the installation involve mainly local solution providers? That is my first question. And the second question is maybe if I may, uh, Piero, is it okay if I ask immediately? This? Please, 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 go ahead, go ahead, sure, sure. Yes. So, and the second question is actually a bit related to that question because the call scope um, asks for the operation of the installation. So not only the construction, but the operation. And that of course brings us to the question of the sort of uh, business visibility. And the question is uh, uh, whether or not, for example, uh, piloting the sales models uh, or basically selling the electricity which is produced by the installation during the project duration um, is possible. Thank you. Uh, uh, thank you for, for the question. Um, in fact, from your first sort of uh, question, uh, I will almost sort of uh, uh, throw the ball back to you because in a sense it's uh, uh, it's your consortium uh, that will have to decide uh, in depending on what you want to demonstrate. Uh, it's, there is no uh, specificity or requirement made in the, in the, in the topic. So it could be, uh, let's say, a, a solution that is existing in Europe and that you adapt for Africa uh, with African partners or it could be an existing or uh, development made in Africa and that you want to use this uh, topic as an opportunity to upscale it and uh, demonstrate it at larger, at larger scale. So um, the two 
opportunities are there. Uh, we are asking a balance of uh, partnership. We didn't sort of specify there it's a 50-50 or 70-40, because it depends on what solution you are uh, intending to demonstrate. Uh, uh, obviously, uh, because we are asking the installation to be in Africa, so part of uh, some of the activity will be done by African uh, uh, workforce or people. Uh, and that's uh, for the consortium uh, as a global to decide sort of how, what would be the approach. Uh, on your uh, second uh, question, uh, indeed, uh, if you are, uh, for example, producing electricity and you are grid connected or not even grid, but you are selling the electricity, you can do it. Uh, it's just sort of um, mean that when you report sort of the cost of your uh, uh, or the, the, fun, the, active, the cost of your project, you will have to report that you had received so much money. Uh, from the selling of your electricity. It would be part of, uh, of the cost assessment and cost reporting that you will need to do. Big thanks, Philippe. Okay, okay, thanks, uh, uh, Philippe. Well, next one uh, would be uh, Raniero Kelly, but I see that is not connected. And also Christina uh, is not connected. So, and the, the same, Jose. So I will give the floor in the meantime to Dalia Seif. Uh, so please, Dalia, unmute yourself and uh, well, you are very welcome to talk. Yes, good morning all. Uh, thank you so much for, uh, for the presentation. I would like to ask about the duration of the project. So do we have any like uh, uh, time frame or uh, yeah, number of, uh, of uh, months to, to like to implement the project or it's open? Thank you so much. Uh, it is open. Uh, obviously, the duration of your project will, uh, or the duration you ask and require from your project will be assessed by the applicants. Uh, it could be, uh, you know, between three to five years, depends. Uh, if it's longer than five years, people or experts may sort of ask in more detail why you are, why you need more time. Uh, but what you need to consider is sort of all the time that you need to get your project uh, implemented. Uh, as we are looking and asking to have an innovation, which we mean uh, demonstration activities where you have to build, construct and operate. So this is stuff uh, in your timing. You have to consider that stuff uh, the time that you may on the court lose to get the permission to be to start building and the uh, also sort of the time that you need to operate to get the reliable information. So uh, I would say do not uh, restrict yourself uh, in the timing, sort of assess clearly how much time you need to have a successful outcome of your, uh, of your project. Okay, thanks uh, Philippe. I would, uh, I would need the floor, I, I would give the floor now to Harry. Ari Adrian Tavi. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Uh, I would like to ask you if um, some activities, for example, on um, I, for example, or uh, uh, capacity building are uh, eligible. A training for uh, policymakers along in Africa. Okay, so you're asking if, uh, sorry, because the communication was not too good. So you're asking if you could have sort of a training for like policymakers within the within the project. Exactly. Uh, uh, well, in the project, we are more looking at sort of uh, as we I said in the topic on uh, on the needs for the workforce uh, and less, let's say, for the policy makers. Uh, I think the it's it's not really in the scope of the project. Uh, uh, I will suggest that because it's more in the scope of the other projects that I mentioned that will start in January. So when that project starts, I will really uh, suggest that 
we'll try to link uh, with sort of that project, uh, and uh, uh, and then sort of uh, uh, make a link with them because it's part of uh, the scope of this project. Okay, uh, thanks. Now I will uh, give the floor to Raniero. I see he's online. Uh, yes, thank you very much for, for, uh, for this presentation. Now, my question was about uh, um, the coordinator. Uh, I've been in, uh, in cooperation projects for many years, and one of the things you always insist on is ownership of results. Now, ownership can be granted, for instance, by having a, a coordinator from the, from the southern shore, from, from, from Africa, for instance, in this case. Is that something which is acceptable or is considered an asset for, for the proposal or not? Uh, <clears throat> there is uh, under H2020, uh, uh, you know, the is the full consortium who owns the uh, sort of the, um, the the results and the partner in the consortium who uh, who did the work. Uh, the administration is quite heavy, as if you are familiar with sort of uh, research framework program. So uh, while uh, an African partner can be uh, uh, a partner, uh, we have you, the consortium has to see if that partner has a capacity to coordinate the project. So, uh, so I think it's it's something that's in that sense uh, under H twenty twenty we have been stuff more, uh, if I can say, open on this is. Uh, it's sometimes better to have a good coordinator and maybe have uh, another partners which take a much more visible uh, aspect, but not burdened by the uh, all the work of uh, being a coordinator. I think it's uh, it's it's your consortium who have to to decide. It's uh, uh, if if I was sort of a bit frank, I think a bad coordinator may create more troubles <laughs> than, than sort of, uh, 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 that's sort of uh, a good, but sort of maybe not less visible one, so. But you can have a bad coordinator from Europe as well. Oh yes, I'm not saying it's a bad coordinator was uh, an African, you know, it's uh, it was a general term and there is even European <laughs> which are bad coordinator also, so. Uh, uh, so I, th I think it's the consortium we have to decide what would be the best for them. Okay, uh, well, I would, uh, uh, would pass to Min Kuang. Uh, good morning, everyone. Thanks for the opportunity to ask a question. Um, I would like to know if the, um, if the call is open for uh, low tax. And in that case, is it open for a combination of low -tech? We are We are considering developing a project that combine different low -tech in a single site. Uh, sorry, I'm not familiar what you mean, low tech, low technology, uh, or uh, it's a low tech. I'm not sure what you mean by low tech. So. Uh, yes, in opposition to high tech, which are ah, okay. Very, uh, okay. advanced technologies, okay. simple technologies that are adapted to uh, the local uh, technical and sociological and uh, market context. We are not making any requirement on this. We are looking at the solution. So it could be a low tech solution uh, that has been developed using, you know, uh, not high tech <laughs> technology for, for the solution. So this is, this is open, uh, but uh, uh, don't forget it's, um, uh, it's a research and innovation program. So the aspect of the innovation part is, sort of, is also important. Uh, uh, in, in that sense, the innovation could be in assembling a number of different low techs in one site. Would, would that be eligible? Well, you, the proposal will have to really explain what is the innovation part. I know that combining existing technologies into one system uh, can be very innovative. Uh, and we had project on, on this. It's, uh, uh, but the aspect of the innovation should be really clearly explained. Thank you very much. Okay, now, uh, well, just a, a communication for IT colleagues. Uh, I don't see Cristina and Jose Alfonso online. So in the meantime, I give the floor to Fokides. 
Uh, yes, hello everyone. Paris Fogaidis from Frederick University, Cyprus. Uh, Mr. Schiller would like to thank you, first of all, for the very interesting introduction of all. Uh, now I have two questions. The first question was already sent. Um, we refer to power generation technologies, which would probably could lead to profit for the operators. Um, is this expected during the duration of the project, during the implementation of the project? Should we have uh, the plant in operation should also profit for the operators um, be presented? This is the first question. And the second question, in the call we read about reliable solutions. Reliable, to my understanding, is TRL9, is something that is already commercialized. At the same time, we also need to have innovation. Uh, in which TRL we should, let's say, focus to present our uh, technical solutions? Should that be TRL 9? And the innovation should be based on the combination of technologies. Could we have research in our uh, proposals uh, or perhaps TRL 7, 8 to 9 by the completion? These are my I would like to Okay. Uh, well, I uh, already have answer the, the first one it's uh, you you can have an income from the project from the outcome you know you produce heat you sell the heat uh, this will have to be reported uh, in your financial statement afterwards uh, so uh, because globally in a sense uh, an EU project should not make profit by itself so it will it will in a sense will have an impact a bit on the uh, uh, on the EC uh, contribution that you will, you will receive. But uh, it's also looking at the total eligible cost. Uh, for the reliable, um, uh, on our viewpoint, we have a different sort of a understanding of reliable. Uh, for us is, for example, if you develop a new, uh, a new concept, a new technologies, and you demonstrate it, uh, for us, part of uh, the reliability that information that you have is, well, you have operated, let's say, for 12 months, and you see, you know, how stable is your concept, you know, technically. Uh, so it, you could have, it could be not fully reliable, that we are not ex expecting a full reliability, uh, but you have enough information that you can base and go to the next step and solve all the issues that you have. Uh, but we are looking that the, the long term, it would be a, a reliable solution. So as I said in my presentation, we're more looking at TRL uh, eight, uh, seven, at most eight, but uh, no more, because we are not financing a commercial application. So. Uh, in terms of research, uh, you could have a bit of research in the project, um, but this research component should not be seen as essential to the demonstration. In a sense that uh, if you fail your research, you should not fail the demonstration. Sort of, this is sort of uh, the issue where the expert will look at if you have a research component in your, uh, in your application. Thank you very much for your answer. I'm covered in both aspects. Thank you. Okay, uh, Philip. Now I, I read the questions of uh, Cristina Soriani that uh, doesn't have the mic, so I will I will read it uh, for for her. Okay. Could you please clarify if the funded actions can focus on one single African country? And then the the second one are collaborations and visits with existing programs funded by EU delegation in the energy sector? Uh, for the first question, the answer is yes, because uh, this is the main reason why in our uh, extra eligibility criteria, uh, we mention only one African countries, uh, because we knew that uh, it can be the case that in the uh, for demonstration activities that it would be only in one country. So this single country could, could be the case. Uh, uh, what we could see, if you involve all the fun, if you have all the program, uh, it could be good if there is a synergies. Uh, however, uh, if you receive funding from the other, con other program, uh, 
obviously from our side, we will investigate uh, from both sides, from the both prog EU programs, if there is not an issue of double funding. And this will be done the case by case uh, situation. Okay, uh, thanks. Now I would give uh, the floor to Georgina, Georgina Ryan. I see she is connected. Well, she is not connected anymore. So I give the floor to Paolo, Paolo Girlando. Paolo, I see you are unmuted, but we cannot hear you. Uh, okay, so uh, well, I, I, I will read. Uh, well, there is a question from uh, Jose Alfonso. Did I understand correctly that uh, Tunisia is not eligible? No, uh, no, it's wrongly. Yeah. Uh, Tunisia is eligible. Uh, Tunisia is an associated state. So uh, I was just mentioning uh, that in the list of eligible countries, it doesn't see in the list because it's, uh, it's within the other, it's within its place, is, uh, is with the other EU uh, countries and associated states uh, to, the, to the research program. So uh, Tunisia is eligible. Sorry for the misunderstanding. Okay. Uh, well, I don't know if uh, Paolo is uh, is connected now. Well, I can I can uh, I can, uh, I can re read uh, his uh, questions. Kindly, could you again clarify the eligibility of applicants? Who should be the applicant? Uh, for example, a legal person, and uh, be non-profit making and be a specific type of organization such as not government, not governmental organization. Uh, others as I finished to read, well, it's a very, very long question. Member states, uh, uh, the uh, beneficiaries established in the annex one. Well, it's a, well, you, you, it's a very, very long question. It's a, or in the developing countries, uh, there are the list of official development assistance, member country for the of uh, OACD, uh, and uh, and so on. Well, well, as a type of organization, any organization can be uh, part of the consortium of the country. Uh, they have to be uh, independent uh, from each other within the consortium. Uh, and it's an and it has to be an organization established in uh, either an EU member state or an associated state, uh, and in the case of Africa, or uh, established in uh, an African uh, one of the African countries. Uh, so, uh, and that's why I was showing you, uh, you know, the information that you can download from the, our website also, uh, the information. Uh, the, the members of the consortium are the real people doing the work. So this is not government applica applicants, if that's what you meant in your question. So uh, these are real organization. This can be private organization. This can be non-profit uh, organization. It's quite open. And it can be what we call a natural person, meaning a single person could be also part of, uh, of a consortium. Okay, thanks. Uh, now I, I let's open the microphone of uh, Georgina that is connected now. Well, uh, I, yeah, Georgina, please. We, we cannot hear you. So in the meantime, I, I, give, uh, I give the floor to Julia, Julia again. Uh, thank you, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Perfect, yeah. Um, thanks. And uh, one more question, sorry for a lot of questions, but uh, a bit on a technical side, so uh, related to the budgeting of the pilots or the installations, I wonder if the call allows for 
third party support or for example if it's possible to launch an open call uh, during the pilot preparation we identify that not all solutions are real, uh, available from the consortium members and also the if the third party support is not available do we then um, is it uh, eligible to procure um, or subcontract uh, parts of the solutions during the project uh, preparation stage. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Julia. Uh, you, are, you are a bit cut. Uh, so from what I understand, uh, uh, the application should have all the, all the partners within the consortium uh, that uh, are able to do the, uh, the work and implement it. Uh, and in terms of third party, we see two types of third party. Uh, you could have a third party that sort of uh, could contribute in kind to the project, and we will link that third party then to, uh, to that project, uh, to one of the partners. Uh, and, and then you have a third party, which is a pure subcontractors. You could have a subcontractors uh, and subcontractors in the, uh, sorry, in the project. Uh, normally, uh, the uh, uh, subcontractors are for activities that do not have any uh, part of, uh, let's say, the innovation. So, uh, so if some, if uh, one aspect of your, uh, or con an important aspect of the development of the concept is subcontracted, then uh, the uh, experts will sc sorry, scrutinize it uh, in more detail to see exactly what will be the, the scope. Uh, but you could subcontract you know, part of the construction, for example, uh, of, of the installation, uh, or even part of the manufacturing of, uh, uh, of the equipment, but not the part that developed the design of the equipment. This is sort of a bit of a uh, distinction that we uh, we are making. I hope it's clear. Uh, okay. So, uh, Georgina, I think I have uh, to read the question because there is a problem. So, to uh, with uh, her uh, mic. Uh, sorry, hear you. Uh, are there assessment tools for impact measurements or do they need to be linked to a theory of change? Um, no, it doesn't mean that the impact have to be linked on the theory of change. It's sort of uh, when you will describe in your proposal what would be your impact uh, is it's part of, uh, because we are a demonstration, so it's part of what would be your expectation and how you see your uh, concepts uh, impacting in, uh, in the economic and uh, social and economic uh, uh, environment of, in Africa. Okay, uh, thanks, Philip. Uh, well, I think uh, we are uh, at the end. There are other, well, one question concerning meeting. Well, for sure, there are, there are subjects in our uh, framework program dealing with uh, uh, Vox, Propolis, uh, Honey Bees, but well, you should have a look uh, on the website and to find uh, the appropriate uh, uh, topics. And uh, then, uh, well, is Morocco eligible? Yes, he is. It is. And uh, then, uh, well, uh, there is another one from Dahafa. Uh, I would like to know if feasibility studies, which uh, will lead to the development and design of energy demonstration projects, are eligible. Uh, well, you could have a feasibility study within the demonstration, but not by itself, uh, because there we are asking for an installation to be tested and operated. So both for renewable energy source, uh, meaning energy production, and or in the energy efficiency part. So it's it's real concrete work that we are looking at, not the feasibility study part. Okay, uh, thanks, Philip. 
I think uh, with uh, with this uh, we hand up uh, uh, the uh, hour and a half uh, of uh, presentation concerning the uh, Green Deal Call Africa. Philip, do you have uh, some last uh, comment? Uh, not really about the uh, you know do read the topics. Uh, Obviously, if you uh, know some people from uh, from Europe, you know, link to those people, uh, and uh, we have a network of uh, uh, national contact point with regard for the uh, uh, in some of the country in Africa. So I would suggest that you uh, uh, that you link to them also, uh, and then maybe better to explain to you um, uh, that sort of. Uh, or to access and how to to link with of, uh, with our program. Okay, and uh, please, uh, I see a question from Dalia. There is no restriction of the number of partners in the consortium. Uh, however, there is a common sense. Uh, it's uh, the minimum is the one uh, I mentioned. So in the case, you should have minimum five partners, three from EU member states or a state state and two from uh, from one Af at least one African countries. Uh, but the more partners that you have, the more uh, difficult the coordination of the project is. So you have to have a balance that you have to have all the necessary expertise in your consortium. So uh, it's for you to judge how many partners you can coordinate. I, I, have, a, I have a question for you, Philip. Are we considering uh, some uh, matchmaking event uh, for more generally for the Green Deal call? More specifically for a uh, uh, number of calls. We uh, were uh, thinking of possibly doing one in December, uh, uh, but for that we have to uh, uh, to see exactly how we want to organize it. But uh, obviously we will uh, keep you informed on uh, on that aspect. Okay. Well, um, with this, uh, well, we are we are uh, uh, six minutes uh, above the the time. Uh, I thank all of you for your participation and uh, for the question. I, I thank uh, all the speakers, the ambassador Marcus, Commissioner Akbor, and uh, uh, Philip Field for their uh, their uh, words. And uh, uh, finally, uh, last but not least, I want to thank uh, all the uh, ICT colleagues, Irene, Fabrizio, Carmela, that have, has been working in a fantastic way to, to keep this webinar. And uh, well, with this, it's, uh, it's all. Thank you all. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.